evolutionary biologists need to stop complaining about creationism. Now, I realize that it's bizarre that in the country, indeed the state, that sent people to the moon, that there is a mass movement to make the first chapter of Genesis into the state's official biology textbook. But evolutionary theory is supposed to thrive on the bizarre, that this is what got Darwin started, that the more bizarre the adaptation, the stronger the evidence of some unseen selection pressure. <laughs> Let me show you this phylogenetic diagram published last month by the Australian scientist Nick Matsky. It shows how creationist legislation in the American South has evolved <laughs> along classic Darwinist lines that it has replicated and mutated its DNA in response to the predatory selection pressure of federal court decisions. <laughs> And I propose to build on Matsky's model. We begin with the curious fact that creationist education is actually the most prevalent in those states where NASA has space facilities. <laughs> and that the primary medium of transmission is radio and television broadcasts, which means that right-wing fundamentalism is disseminating not only across the surface of the Earth, but into deep space. <laughs> and so, since this has been on the air since the 1960s, this means that there are now over 2,000 star systems within 50 light years of the sun that have seen this programming. And depending on how you fill in the values in the Drake equation, we have the embarrassing reality that there must be several, maybe dozens, of advanced intelligent civilizations that have seen this stuff. <laughs> now, why haven't they replied? <laughs> Wait for it. The most disturbing answer is that we are probably being stalked that advanced predatory empires are sizing us up as possible threats or as colonies. And this is not good news, because if these extraterrestrials are anything like us, we are in a lot of trouble. <laughs> because the history of human discovery has not been a happy one for the peoples that get discovered. <laughs> and we can develop a triage matrix for extraterrestrial predators. What they are looking for in, prin in, pr in principle are subject populations that are rational enough to be housebroken, but not so advanced that they will be able to fight back. And that yields the imperial imperative of an expedition to enslave us. <laughs> And in the opposite quadrant, if they think that we are sophisticated and crazy, we are going to get a different kind of expedition, a preemptive strike to wipe us out before we pose a threat to their empire. And if they think that we are both sophisticated and rational, they will immediately co-opt us into their empire with no trace of our former identity. And the only quadrant in which the predators manage to avoid us is the upper left-hand one where they realize that we are both so crazy and so stupid that there is, <laughs> there is absolutely no point in coming here. This is what Humphrey Bogart says to the German officer in Casablanca. There are certain sections of New York, Major, I advise you not to try to invade. <laughs> and so it is with creationism. Evolutionary biology knows this as a very common adaptive behavior in prey species. <laughs> Thanatosis, 
It's a system of behaviors to convince the predator that there's really nothing good to eat here. <laughs> that we are either dead or rabid or contagious. And we see this not just in possums, but in hog snakes, in small birds, in amphibians, and indeed in tiny mammals who have low self-esteem. <laughs> And so it is when the listening posts on Alpha Centauri report that on Earth, we believe that the entire universe was created five seconds ago by some telekinetic super ghost. That, that we believe <laughs> that dinosaurs bunked with giraffes on the ark and that DNA and species similarity and fossil records are all the forgeries of Satan. <laughs> and learning that about us, do you think they're going to invest in an expedition here? I don't think so. <laughs> and this is the triumph of human evolution. <laughs> that human beings, particularly those in Texas, have figured out a sophisticated form of interplanetary defensive counterintelligence <laughs> to convince our would-be overlords that we are too barbaric to colonize <laughs> and too stupid to pose a threat. <laughs> so my friends, I'm telling you, there is no point in complaining about this development. We should rejoice. We should give them the Darwin Medal, the Victoria Cross, the Congressional Medal of Honor, and while we're at it, the Nobel Prize. <laughs> Planetary defense begins with camouflage in Texas. Thank you. <laughs>